research is the foundation for building strategies for any successful organization. I'm Dr. Christy Grayson, and today I'm going to present to you a short video for marketing research students to help you better understand the semester long project that we'll have for this course and to provide you with the information you need to be successful in what I'm expecting of you. So take a couple minutes to watch this short video so that you can familiarize yourself with the project that we will be working on throughout the course. Why are we working on this project? Conducting research is critical to the success of an organization because it provides the data and information necessary to develop a strong strategy. It also assists decision makers and leaders within the organization to create informed decisions. So creating a strategy or marketing or making a decision without sound research can be a recipe for disaster. And there's numbers in, of, of examples of, of companies who made decisions without really taking the time to do some good solid research. Not all research is perfect, but following a solid methodology will provide confidence that you've examined the information to make a good informed business decision. So what do I mean by making a good decision? There are several steps in a decision making process for a business. And what's important is that you know as a business what your overall objective is. Once you have an objective, then you need to figure out how am I going to go about creating an informed decision to see what I can do or what I need to know to make that um, objective successful. Then you need to figure out what is it that I know today. In companies, we have information from sales teams, from our financials, from our marketing teams, but when you're looking at a particular business problem that may have changed, let's say something's different because of the ramifications of the pandemic, perhaps there is a new objective that you have as an organization and you need to figure out where that gap in knowledge is that you don't have yet today. And that's the piece that we're trying to determine through our research process. So there is a consistent formula that businesses use to conduct research, and it is based on academic research as well. And you probably have used this in other courses. If you have um, taken consumer behavior or if you're, you're in consumer behavior now from, from what I teach, you will see, this will seem very familiar to you because the steps are very consistent in terms of following a good sound methodology. The first thing that we do in research is formulate a problem. And this is what can, the, the, this is, is answering the questions. What do I want to accomplish? What is my objective? What do I need to know? That's what you start off with. Then we determine the research design, which is what do I have today? What information is already available to me? And what resources do I need to be able to fill the gap in the things that I don't know today? Then we collect the data, and that could be primary data, meaning data that we collect on, on our own, or secondary data, which is, is research that has been conducted by someone else. We do this, we collect the data to try to get to the answer of uh, the, the research question that we formulated earlier. Then we analyze the information, and we will be doing a lot of this in class where we are going to collect information, analyze it using statistical packages, Excel or SPSS, and we're trying to figure out what we've learned so that we can put forth a finding and a recommendation. So five simple steps in that process. Let's talk a little bit about the project and getting the work done. So the way this project works is that we will be working on it throughout the semester. As we learn a concept or a piece of the 
the research design or the research process, we will be working on a component that will inform this written research project. So I want you to keep in mind that um, this will be a bit of work. It's a big uh, signature project it, and it's a, it's a formal research report. So you may want to consider working as a team. Um, I know right now it's, it's a little bit difficult uh, with some of us being live streaming and some of us being face to face and swapping that working as a team may not be the most efficient process. I am open to you working individually on a project. However, I want you to know that two or three minds are always better than one and divvying up the workload is going to be to your advantage. So if you can find somebody to work on as a team, this is going to likely be to your benefit in the long haul. So um, with that, please note that if you are working in a team, uh, you will receive a team grade for the final project. I mentioned we will have a number of smaller assignments that we'll work on that will inform the larger project. So keep in mind that those assignments will still be individual to you. However, the broader project, the formal written research report, as you're working on as a group, that will be a team grade. So keep in mind, as we start to think of ideas for your topics, keep in mind that I will need to know fairly quickly whether you plan on being part of a team or doing an individual project. So here's what you're gonna do. You are going to find a company or a proposed company or a product in the real world that you believe could benefit from understanding a marketing problem or opportunity. I suggest that you not work on a big company like Nike or Apple. They have great research already and you might have an idea for that, but, but try to make something that's a little bit closer to home, a little bit more relevant and something that will actually benefit an actual company. Um, this might include marketing problem or an opportunity for uh, relating to customers. You know, maybe you have, maybe someone wants to do a customer satisfaction survey or perception of a brand in the market. It could be an advertising campaign. We're gonna learn a lot about things that we, we measure and we can do from experiments that we do with color in product types and A-B testing on websites. It could be something like that. It could be something in terms of product offerings. Do you wanna offer a new product or service or make some changes? What might that look like? Distribution, uh, is there a better way to deliver a product to the customer? And sales. So there's so many different things that we could work on for your project that will align to an objective for a business. So here's what you're going to do for the project. There's several different components to it. The first thing that we're going to do, and this will be one of our first assignments, is we are going to formulate a research problem. And a research problem really is what is keeping the business awake at night? What is their overall objective? It could be something like, we just don't have as many sales as we did before COVID-19 hit. That's a research problem. So once we, we have that high problem, then we go into a research question, which digs a little bit deeper into what are those things that questions we have that we can measure through a testable hypothesis. Then we're going to design a research methodology. And this is how are we, you know, how are we going to design or collect the information? Will it be a survey? Will it be a focus group? Or um, we also are going to look at things like who will we sample? So the research methodology is the next step. Once we have the methodology in place, we are going to collect the data. Uh, we are doing two separate data collections. In this class, we will be doing an exploratory assignment, and then we will do, be doing a quantitative assignment. And the quantitative assignment will likely be delivered via survey. 
So keep in mind that um, you'll be learning all of those great survey tools as well. So once we collect the respondent data, then we are going to take the information and we're going to analyze it. And this comes into the fun statistics part of the course. So we're gonna be collecting data from our quantitative analysis. We are gonna learn how to clean the data, make sure it's accurate, load it into a, a, a software package. We're gonna create data tables and variables and making sure that everything is clean and concise so that we can run the statistics and spend the great amount of our, of our time doing what we wanna do, which is analyzing the information, understanding what we found, are our testable hypothesis proven out or not? And then we want to create a recommendation based on the findings of what we learned. So after we've done all of this, you are going to put all of these elements into a summary, a formal written research report, and then you're going to make a presentation to the class. So things to keep in mind as you think about selecting a topic. The first thing that I want you to really hone in on is the research question. Again, the problem that we're trying to, to answer or solve. And you wanna make sure that the research question directly aligns with the business problem or the opportunity. Sometimes we get all excited about, I really wanna know why color is so important in uh, the way I behave as a consumer. Why do I like red versus blue versus green versus purple? Those are really great, cool ideas for consumer behavior, but it doesn't necessarily align to a business objective. So let's make sure what we, our research questions are measuring what will be beneficial to the organization. I'll give you an example of that. Uh, last semester, I had a student working, um, this was prior, actually it's fall of last year, this is prior to remote learning that happened so suddenly. He was interested in understanding whether or not um, Dixie State University's fee for online classes uh, impacted the number of students taking an online class. Was that uh, something that prevented them from doing that. So what he was doing, that was really his research question, which aligned to a broader business problem, which was, does Dixie State University have enough online classes? Or is it beneficial for them to have an uh, online classes? So that's an example of what I mean there. You also wanna make sure that you choose a topic for which you can gather data. All too often we have glorious ideas. Um, I'm working on a few studies right now that's really, really challenging to collect data. Either I can't get a hold of enough consumers or it's very expensive to collect consumer data. So make sure that you are going to have enough people in your sample to be able to collect enough information. So just another thing to think about because if your topic is so teeny tiny small, you may not get enough people to be able to give you good results as to, to analyze. So you will, I will be throughout the semester, um, I will be giving you assignments to help you walk through these elements. And note that in the instructions that I have posted in Canvas, there, will, there, there is um, the elements that you'll need for the written research report, specifically what those things mean, what I'm looking for, uh, slide decks and, and this video to help you through that process. And we will be working on this uh, during class time, time as well. So really quickly, the elements of the, the research report, the first thing is the executive summary. The executive summary is the one pager of all your analysis and you can guarantee it's probably gonna be the only thing your executive or business leader is going to read. So you are going to think about how do I give all the information necessary to show my results in a matter of an executive being able to scan it and read it in 60 seconds or, 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 more, or, or less. So that, that's the executive summary. Then you're going, to have, you're going to have a section on methodology. 
Methodology is your research design that I mentioned earlier. How you went about collecting the data, who your sample was, how many responses you got back, what sampling procedure did you do, and what analysis techniques are you going to use. So in this particular project, I mentioned before that we are going to be doing two types of analyses. We're going to do one exploratory or qualitative study, which um, we will talk about um, next time or, or early on in the semester. And then we're going to be doing one quantitative study. Then the next section is analyzing the data you've collected. You are going to use a number of different methodologies in this course to learn about how to analyze the data. It's such a foundational piece to marketing research that I promise will be so useful to you in your career. Um, in this, when we analyze the qualitative part of this study, I'm going to want you to describe the techniques that you used in class. In, in collecting that data. When it comes to the quantitative, uh, the basic, where we're going to use basic descriptive statistics from the information that comes back that will include things like frequency tables, basic summaries, means, averages, the pie charts you typically see and the bar charts you see when, you, when people are talking about research. Those are descriptive statistics. They're, they're good informational, uh, nice pieces of information to have, but it doesn't always dig deep enough into answering the why question. And so what we're going to do is take your data and we're gonna dig do a little bit deeper. We're gonna do some correlations using a correlation uh, table and in, in, in interpreting chi-square statistics. And then we're also going to do one regression table, which would be a prediction. So we are gonna crunch some numbers in this class, I promise. It might be a little painful, it may not, but I know we're all gonna get through it together and it'll be, it'll be fun and super useful because statistics are really, um, and research and analyzing is really so important in making an informed decision and learning how to do that correctly and how to interpret that information is key. Which leads me to the final piece, which is your results and your findings. The results of the findings are what did you learn from the data you've just analyzed? What are the supporting tables and charts and figures really telling us? You'll need to explain this in real words. Um, to, to your decision maker so that they have enough understanding that they can then make a final decision based on the information you provided. And then generally we have a summary paragraph and your summary or concluding paragraph will wrap things up very concisely. It's also going to include something that we call limitations. Now limitations in any research study are those things that if we had if we had a chance to do it all over again, we would do it. Or maybe um, there's some things that happened that you wish hadn't, or you're afraid may have introduced some bias. And we'll talk about bias in the class. It could be things like, well, I didn't get very many people taking my survey. My sample size was low. Or um, I can't generalize my information because I only sampled people who went to Dixie State University. I can't really make an assumption on all universities because this is one university in a specific geography. Those types of things are just pointing out to people that yes, my data is sound. However, there's some limitations around the interpretation or the validity of that in a larger context. And so finally, you're going to have the appendix. Now the appendix of any research report is all, you know, it's the back stuff where people can go and if they want more information, that's where you go to look. This isn't going to include all of your references. You are going to go through and do a literature review, which I'll talk about soon. Um, it'll include your references. It will include your survey instrument that you'll use for your quantitative portion. 
you will have a coded data book so I can understand specifically what variables you've measured in your questions and how you're going to analyze it and what that means. Um, you're going to have your charts and graphs in the appendix, your correlation table, and your regression table. So again, this is, this is not the dialogue, the story that we've created in the formal research report. It's the backstory that informs everything that you talked about. Oh, so finally, what are we going to do here? How is this all going to be approached? So, so you're going to create a formal research report, what I've been talking about. This report you have to keep in mind, I want your consultant, so consider your audience. Your audience is the business owner. So the tone of that report has to use business language. It has to be very professional, but it has to be concise enough where you're not going to lose your audience. You will also be writing an APA format because this is an academic study. Um, and I want you to use your citations. I don't ever want to, to ask, have me ask the question, how do you know this? If you make a claim and it's not something you're researching, you must have a citation for it and it must be included in your references. Um, so, so, so the style, APA format, the conversation, business professional. Um, you're going to talk about the conclusions, obviously, and uh, also the research pro problem. Be straightforward. If, if, and this is where your limitations come, come in. We do research all of the time as businesses and the results aren't always coming out to what we had hoped. Be straightforward. If the results are not what you hoped to be or didn't, or your hypothesis weren't, you know, weren't what you, the results did not come out to be what you wanted them to be, it's okay. That's why we do research. We, the reason why we do research is so that we can make an informed decision. And this is oftentimes why businesses don't do research because they like to go with their gut feel or they're afraid if they do research, they're going to learn something that might be frightening for them or might not um, align to what their special project or initiative is. So keep that in mind. It's okay if it doesn't turn out the way you wanted it to. That's why we do this. And then finally, you're going to tell us about the recommendations that you're going to give to the business owner or the, the decision maker based on the re great research that you've completed. So that's the written piece. Then we're going to have the, the presentation. So when you're a marketing consultant or you're a researcher within the organization, there will be a time where you're going to have to present your findings. You might have this beautiful report that may or may not ever get read, but I guarantee you have about two minutes to convince a, an executive or a decision maker uh, what they should do based on the research that you probably spent months and months creating. So this, what you're going to do for this piece in this class is a video presentation. And the video presentation is going to be that summary of your written report. It will be less than 15 minutes. What I'm going to be looking for is that uh, those, those five things that 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 are aligned in in the written report but i want you to you know state the general purpose of why you're doing this what is the business problem what are the objectives of the study tell us a little bit about how you collected the data your findings and conclusions and that's really all we need to to have. So, so we are going to be watching the video presentations in class and we are going to um we're, we're going to have some Q&A afterwards. So that's what you can expect. Grading. This is a big project, and this project is worth 32% of your grade. 130 points for the written paper and 30 points for the presentation. Um, this is a big part of your grade because this is a really important skill for any marketer to have. Um, this isn't an easy skill. This is very quantitative work, but analysis and data uh, in the marketing field is really, really important. And I will tell you, it's a very lucrative field to be in. If you like 
um, statistics and numbers in, in solving problems and analyzing data, this is a super field for you to be in. So all of us really need to understand how to complete research and then also how to interpret it in, in order for us to make great recommendations. So that's why this is such an important part of the project. In Canvas, I have, as I mentioned, the instructions. There'll be a slide deck in there outlining everything I just talked about, and there's rubrics. So you understand specifically what's expected of you, both for the written part of the project and also for the, the video presentation. So finally, I just want to know that um, want you to know that I'm really excited about this. I am passionate about research. I have had the opportunity to work in marketing research for a long, long time, well before you were ever born. And it's always been a foundational part of my marketing career, regardless of what position I've had. I've always used research to help make sound decisions. So hopefully you fall in love with it as well.